if you're looking to buy land in Nanyuki, today I'm going to share with you some of the tips that I usually give my clients when I'm advising them on how to proceed with the process of getting land in Nanyuki. So I'm Jackie Mwangi and I have a real estate marketing agency and we have a platform called Own Kenya, which is where people come and get verified listings in Nanyuki. So the first tip I usually give people is look at the land yourself or do a virtual tour. We usually arrange virtual tours for some of our clients who are out of the country. And we do a virtual tour that simulates an actual tour. Everything from finding the beacons to the soil quality, to the facilities around, is there water, is there electricity? What does the neighborhood look like? What are the views like? And we do that for them because they can't be around. They can't be here. But if you're in Kenya, if you're able to do the physical visit for yourself, that's really great because you can come and see these things for yourself. Bond with the land, feel the energy of that land. Because every land, in my view, actually has a vibe. So there are some areas you, you go and you're just like, man, I feel so connected to the land here. Maybe your ancestors are down there. So come and connect with the land yourself. Do the site visit. Don't start negotiating if you haven't done the site visit because it's always better to negotiate after you've at least seen the land. Then even the owner of the land knows that you're serious. But before, when you're still away and you don't plan to come and see the land, if you're negotiating, sometimes people will refuse because they don't think you're serious. You, you, I had a case actually recently where I had to negotiate on behalf of a buyer who is interested in a property and they couldn't come this weekend to see the property and i negotiated on their behalf but it was an uphill task to convince the owner that i'm negotiating and they are really serious because the owner usually says ameona shamba kama jaona shamba tunajua aje kama kweli anataka like you discuss pricing once you're sure that this is the listing that you want so that's two <laughs> um, do a land search ministry of lands is available for you to do a search the search usually takes like three days if i'm not wrong um, it can be shortened of course when you pay extra <laughs> um, but yeah do a land search get the land search from the ministry of lands find out the history of that land if you can sometimes you want to know was it something passed on you know is it ancestral land is it was there a dispute or has there been a dispute is the buyer's wife is the seller's wife aware that the seller is selling the land because they'll need to give consent for the land board once you've started that process so make sure that like you understand you know the history of the land you know you've done a land search so you make sure that that land is um, is legit that it doesn't have any issues and in order for you to do a land search you'll need the title not just one page of the title ask for all four pages of the title because the other pages will tell you if it was a subdivision that information will be there if there's a loan or any court order on that land it will be on the other pages so sometimes somebody can send you the top page only but the real information is on the other pages so you want to get all four pages of that land then of course do your land search verify whether the land is actually in the person's name whether the documentation is legit look at things like even the dates when was the when the land search comes out check the dates on the title versus the dates on the land search just make sure that all the information the names are aligned and all the information is congruent right so let me see what else ah when you're also buying land i took down some notes so i don't forget the most important things that i want to share with you but when you're buying land also look at the zoning regulations of that land some land is commercial some is residential some is agricultural you may have to change this land depending on the regulations of that area so if you're planning to let's say do a commercial building you know about the change of user so you would need to change the user if that land is not already in commercial like it's not been registered as commercial land so just check those things and also check some of the things like if you're near an airport you can't build a certain up to a certain point depending on where you are in the cone because the kaa has like this cone where the closer you are 
to the airstrip let's say the airstrip is here the closer you are the lower the building is supposed to be the further you go the higher you can go with that building so there's this cone and you want to make sure that your land would have you'd have approval to build the stories that you want to build develop so check things like those because those are important we have an airstrip in nanyuki so if you're planning planning to come to nanyuki you don't only have to drive like you have options of flying in when you make the site visit you want to check access to the to the land so you want to see how the road infrastructure is sometimes you can find like an area doesn't have developed roads and that's fine make sure you look at that big map it's usually what we go around with i'll include a picture here so you can see how it looks like but it's a big map that shows you like where the roads are where the railways are what how the land looks like in terms of demarcation and all that and you can see what roads you have um, access to in order for you to access your land because you can find like sometimes the way the land has been subdivided there is no road that accesses your land that's in the back there so you would need to negotiate with the owner the person who's selling you the land to get them to cut for you a road so if that's the case make sure that is also in the sale agreement because after the fact after you've paid the person can decide their own things so you want to make sure that you've checked those roads you have access to your land because i've seen situations where somebody buys land but there's no road to access it and then you're given a high price in order for you to be given access so make sure you check that before ah yeah and land boundaries so ask about the beacons or where the the land how the land has been demarcated look at that big map so you can see exactly how that land has been demarcated but also there are beacons on the land that show you where the land starts in one area and ends in the other area sometimes these beacons tend to be removed especially if there is no fence people tend to remove the beacons i've never understood why but yeah it happens a lot and i've seen it a lot the owner who's selling you the land should put those beacons for you so at first you can agree okay you've seen in the map this is how the land looks like you know the acreage you've seen the title you've done the search the beacons are not there maybe the guy doesn't have the money to do to get a surveyor but make sure that it's in the agreement that the cost of the beacon will be of rebeaconing the land will be borne by the seller so the seller even when you pay them a deposit they have the obligation to go and put the beacons on that land so that you make sure you know exactly where that land begins ends if there are roads that pass and everything you get a proper surveyor um, to come and do that for you and put the beacons ah then also consider like is there anything coming up in that area are there maybe water storage facilities coming up are there boreholes coming up is there a river nearby is there a dam that you can tap water public dam a community dam um, are there hotels coming up in that area or what else is coming up in that area and i usually find because when i go verify land i walk around the area and i talk to people and i found that in that process sometimes i even get to find out um, any issues that had arisen with that land in the past i think ninja fell in the water i can hear splashing okay good boy <laughs> you're safe ha huh? all right i was worried <laughs> yeah so you know walking around i get to learn about that land the history of the land if there were any issues with that land um, any developments that are coming up like this one was bought by a guy in australia he's doing hub farming this one they it was a group a diaspora group that is planning to subdivide or build a lodge this one is owned by uhuru so the road in front is called uhuru highway that's actually naibo <laughs> this one is um is opposite um uh, martha Kome's house <laughs> in mukema like uh, there are all these things that you get to learn about an area when you're buying land find out like who are the neighbors there's an mp on that other side there's you know somebody on this other side there's an old man there they're having a mashakaya there because the somebody passed away the brother passed away or something so you can get all this information i usually have that information 
and <laughs> I usually have that information for the listings that we have but also just check for yourself see if there's any information you can get maybe they're putting up a highway or they're they're doing um, they're doing the government is doing something or you know some some form of development it helps because then you can understand how much faster your land will appreciate yeah then the last thing before i go and check on this guy the last thing is have a lawyer handle that process so <laughs> i have seen people saying okay i can't afford a lawyer so i would rather do it myself but what usually happens after that is when the seller makes an offer you need somebody who can tell you whether that language covers you and whether it's it's fair whether it secures your interests so you want a lawyer who you can use for that process and i've seen and had stories i haven't personally seen i've just had stories of people who decided not to use lawyers and then later on it came and cost them a lot more than they would have paid for 10 lawyers so get a lawyer get somebody who can handle that transaction on both ends so the seller has their lawyer the buyer has their lawyer they can use the same lawyer it's not an issue i handled a transaction like that recently but just make sure that there's a lawyer who's there drafting the agreements doing all those forms and everything and making sure oh boy yeah uh that they handle your interest and you can also ask them questions and sometimes there's an amount that may be retained um, after the transaction is complete before the title is changed into the new owner's name so that amount can be held by the lawyer stuff like that they'll tell you that process and let me know if you want to see a video where i walk you through like what's the actual process of um of buying land and that's general like whether it's in Nanyuki or anywhere else I can do a different video on that one we usually have a lawyer that we work with so sometimes when our clients come because you want a lawyer in Nanyuki who understands um, land laws and who understands conveyancy you don't just want any lawyer you want a lawyer who actually specializes and knows conveyancy well so I have a lawyer who I usually use here she's very good and she's honest because that's another thing you want for your, from your lawyer. And knowing that, that lawyer will know how to handle like speeding up certain processes, where to go for different things. Um, they have connections or contacts within the lands to help clarify on certain things. So it really helps, especially if you have like a local lawyer from that area who can help walk you through the process and who can help connect you with the right resources to speed things up for you so yeah those are my tips and yeah do let me know again if you want more information around the processes i also want to be doing live webinars where i take questions live i will be sharing more information with that below this video but check out our own Kenya platform where you can get verified land listings in Nanyuki and you can come and live next to me next to the river See you next time.